What's going on, guys? I hope you're having a blessed and beautiful day today. I have something today I wanted to talk a little bit about, and I've briefly talked about this in the past, but I want to go ahead and touch on it again. Um, You know, I've seen this topic for quite some time, and I have to say that I never really, I never heard or have ever seen anything like this until I got on YouTube. And for me, when I first got on YouTube, it was kind of like, you know, it's a given, you know, this is not the way that this, you know, that this should be. And it's, it's, this is false, you know. Um, And it's not just because that's the way it was raised or the way it was taught, but that's the way that the Bible speaks to me to know, to let me know that what these people are saying is not true and it's false. And, you know, God gives me discernment, but he also gives me um, a righteous anger within me that makes me want to be so bold and to just speak out, even if I'm the only one standing there shouting it from the rooftops. And, you know, you have to speak the truth into people and into their hearts and you have to speak the truth no matter what and even when it's not the most popular thing because what's most popular is what makes you feel good and what's most popular is what um you know it is false because if it's false then that means that you don't have the conviction and you don't have you know anything in your heart that's telling you that what you're doing is wrong um, or what you're believing is wrong or what you're hearing is wrong. And if you can't discern the, between a truth and a lie, if you can't discern and say, you know, that doesn't sound right, um, and then go to the Bible and, and seek it out for yourself, if you're relying on other people, you know, you're going to get yourself trapped You're going to get yourself stuck into a sticky situation and into false beliefs and will in turn um, may, not saying all, but may in turn cause you to either one, be left behind or two, find yourself in hell. And there's a lot of false doctrine that's out there and it's creeping up more and more as the days go by. And a lot of a lot of the these false doctrines are are surrounded with people on YouTube and a lot of them are with popular people who have a lot a lot of people on their channel they have a lot of subscribers um or they have a lot of people that follow them or whatever and you know sadly it's false and it comes to a point where you know it's time to cut out the nonsense it's time to um, stop being babies and start being grown ups. And by that, I mean, you know, stop living in the crib and start walking to college, you know, start reading your word of word of God and know what the word says, rely on God, rely on the word, allow him to teach you, allow him to manifest in you and allow the Holy Spirit to draw near to you and tell you the truth so that you will not find yourself falling into deception. And there's so many people that would rather stay in the crib and play with their baby toys instead of becoming an adult and learning and growing and and finding themselves more in tune with the Lord and more in tune with the word and knowing more about the word. They would rather to just kind of cherry pick the word and as long as they can get by on these few verses that they can memorize so that they can rattle them off you know as quick as they can but the rest of it they don't understand or they don't know or they don't understand the words that are before those verses or after those verses they just kind of cherry pick certain verses that that um, they like that's pleasing to their ear and soft on the tongue, and also um, gains people into their camp, and kind of the more people that they can get into their camp, then the more that they can, uh, they feel better about themselves. They feel like they have accomplished something, 
if they can gain as many people into their camp as they can. It doesn't matter if what they're speaking is the truth. It doesn't matter if what they're speaking is of God. It doesn't matter if what they're speaking even lines up with scripture. They, it's just a matter of um, people pleasing, being liked by man and by society and by the world standards. And so you conform to the world standards and you conform to the doctrines of the world. You conform to the religions of the world. You kind of mix and mingle different religions into one. And then you make your own religion. You make up your own Jesus and the Jesus that tells you that all of these things are okay, that they're not wrong, they're not a sin, and it's okay to live this way. And, um, you know, as long as God isn't responding, as long as God is quiet on the matter, as long as you haven't been chastised by God on this matter, then he either doesn't care or he doesn't find anything wrong with what you're doing. And that is believing in a false Jesus because God will always, when there is sin in our life, God will always chastise us, whether we like it or not. And he will always allow us to go through trials and tribulations in our lives when we have sin in our life. And when we have sin in our life, and and don't don't misquote me and don't misrepresent, uh, misunderstand me. We will never stop sinning, okay? We will never be perfect. However, there are sins that are great sins in our lives that a lot of people will hang on to and they would rather please their flesh and desire that sin so much that they don't care about the consequences or they want that that sin sinful desire so much that they don't care what the word of God says, what other people who are trying to tell them that they're in error, um, what they say, they just want it. They want what they're, what pleases their flesh. And as long as God isn't saying anything about it, as long as he's not chastising them, as long as he's not causing them to be in tribulation or in a, a trial, then obviously he must be okay with it or he must not have a problem with it or it must not be a sin after all. And that's the furthest thing from the truth. Um, and that that is an indication that you have made a false Jesus and are believing in a false Jesus that doesn't seem to care what you're doing. And you are either so seared, your conscience is so seared that you don't feel the conviction of that sin anymore, or or you are not saved to begin with and you can't possibly have the conviction of the Holy Spirit because you don't have the Holy Spirit to begin with. And that leads me into what I wanted to talk about. And um, the other day I was on Twitter and and I saw a comment from somebody that preaches grace nonstop, okay? And, you know, I, I believe, you know, I want to start out this this way. I believe in eternal security, and everybody who knows me knows that. I believe that once you are saved, you are sealed for eternity. But I also believe that when someone is saved, that they are entered into a family. They're entered into God's family, and, you know, there is an elect, okay? The people that are born again are the elect. We are chosen and we are an elect. We are in the family of God. However, there are many who say that they are, but they don't truly believe. They have head knowledge. They know a lot of scripture. They know a lot of right words to say. They know how to sound religious. They know how to sound like they are somebody. They know how to sound like they know the Bible in and out. They know how to preach sermons um, that, you know, sound really good. They they know how to speak like they're on fire for the Lord. They know how to, um, you know, start a fire within other people's hearts, but they don't have heart knowledge. They don't truly know the Lord. They have head knowledge. They know everything that there is to know about the Lord but they don't have heart knowledge. 
And by that meaning that their heart hasn't been changed. They have not become a new creation in Christ. They have not even truly accepted Christ. They have said it with their mouth that they believe in God, they believe in Jesus, or they believe in the Bible, but they haven't truly believed in their heart. They don't truly believe that he died on the cross for them. Um, they either did it because they they went with their friends. Let's say they went to church with their friends, or they, they saw other people doing it, or they were raised in a Christian home, or they heard it all their life, or they wanted to feel the inner peace that they, that you know so many people are desiring they desire this inner peace so they figure that you know christianity is the way to go um you know i growing up i had a youth pastor that was wonderful i mean he knew the bible in and out um you know as a youth in in high school you know myself and many in my in my uh youth group learned so much from this guy and he was you know he knew Jesus in and out so he said right but later on in life he left Christianity and he became a Buddhist and it was all because he wanted to feel spiritual he wanted that spiritual feeling and the reason why he quote unquote left Christianity was because he really did it because he was trying to impress somebody. He was trying to impress a girl, which he ended up marrying, by the way. And, you know, it was with his his seducing words. He spoke very eloquently. He spoke about the Bible. He knew the Bible without even having to look it up. He knew which scriptures to read. He knew everything he could about the Bible. And a lot of times you have people that infiltrate the church that know all of this stuff. They have head knowledge, but they don't have heart knowledge. And, you know, that being said, you know, I could ask, you know, I heard this question the other night and it really, you know, it really stuck with me because, you know, there's so much truth in it. And it was, if following Jesus became illegal, would you have enough evidence to find you guilty for following him? So the evidence that you show on the outside is not just evidence of for show. It's an evidence that the world knows that you're different. It's by your actions. It's by your daily living. You live the same behind closed doors as you do in public. You are constantly the same. You, Everybody who would know you knows that you're the same on the inside and the out. Behind closed doors with friends, out in public, and behind closed doors. You are the same always. You never change. Um, you know, if you're if you go out with your friends and you're acting like the world, but then you come home or you go to church and you act like you're, you know, a saint, then you're not consistent and there's a, a question there. And, you know, would they find you guilty of following Christ by your actions? And by that definition, the answer would be no, because you act like the world. Um and I know I kind of went off a little bit, but um, so that leads me to what I saw on on Twitter um, the other day was somebody, he preaches grace nonstop, but he made a comment that it just, it burned me up. I'm sorry to say, but it burned me royally because his comment was, I can, I can... Let's see, how did he say it? How did he word it? I can stop believing and I'm still saved. I can stop believing and I'm still saved. And that is such a heresy. And it's dangerous to tell people that you can stop believing and you're still saved. First of all, the Holy Spirit indwells any believer, any true believer. So... Any true believer in Christ 
isn't going to turn around and say, I'm not a Christian anymore. I don't believe in God anymore and follow and go, you know, worship Satan or go to Buddhist or go to Mormonism or Muslim or ISIS or whatever. You know, the Holy Spirit sears our conscience and lights our hearts on fire. Okay. Any true believer is going to be just, um, they're going to have the conviction of the Holy Spirit if they're starting to waver. Saying that I can stop believing and still be saved is, is such a lie from the pit of hell. And it's leading many to hell. Because you're saying basically that anybody can go to heaven. That it's not an elect type of thing. Anybody can go to heaven because, you know, as long as you believe. And like I've said before, there are many people that believe in Jesus, right? Or believe in God. Muslims believe in Jesus. Mormons believe in Jesus. Uh, Even Buddhists believe in Jesus. Uh, There's many other New Agers, that type, New Age type of Christianity. Um, There's many different religions that believe in Jesus. So what you're saying is that all religions will lead you to, to the cross and lead you to heaven. And I, I would not bank my eternity on that belief that I can stop believing and be saved. I would not bank my eternal eternity on that. And that is such a, um, a horrible thing to try to lead people into that you can stop believing and be saved because that is going to lead people, you know, of, in the world to believe that they can live as the world and they're fine. Um, or people who, again, are not truly saved and, you know, there's a difference between losing your faith. And I don't mean like falling out of your salvation because once you're saved, you're eternally saved. There's a difference between, you know, being faithless, like, you know, Lord God, I'm, I'm, I'm losing my mind here, or I don't know what's going on. I don't understand why this is happening. Why is this happening to me? You know, you kind of lose your faith. You, you don't see action. You don't see your prayers answered. You don't see, you know, you kind of lose that. And there's another, and, and then that's totally different to say, I can stop believing and I'm saved because God says that he will never leave us. And though that's true, it's only for the elect. It's not for everybody. And there's so many people now that are coming out and saying, I'm not a Christian anymore. I don't believe in God anymore. There's pastors that are coming out. These people taught in church. They led people in church and they, you know, stood up at their pulpit and they spoke out of their wor- out of their mouth words but they didn't even believe what they were even speaking and they're coming out and saying well I'm not a believer anymore there's a- an author that just came out yesterday I'm not a Christian anymore and I'm happy about it and you know this is where the false doctrine of of this comes in because <coughs> Because not everybody is going to heaven. All roads don't lead to heaven. And just because they utter with their mouth that they believe in Jesus doesn't mean that they're saved. Does not mean that they're going to heaven. Does not mean that they're rapture ready. Does not mean that they are saved. Okay? And by telling people that you can stop believing and still be saved is not only sending people to hell, but it's also making people in the world believe that they can just say that they believe and they're fine. Or they can just utter with their mouth, I think I believe in Jesus. Sure, I believe in God. And they're saved. And that's not the case. And it's people like this 
and so many others that are saying saying this garbage without reading the Bible as a whole and knowing scripture for what it says, they're leading people to hell and it makes me it makes me angry, honestly, because I see souls being lost and it's their fault because they are telling people a lie and people are buying into this lie. And, you know, unfortunately with, with social media and with platforms, people latch on to certain people. Okay, they they are drawn to certain people and they hang on to every word of these people instead of looking at it for themselves, being a Berean and finding out the information for themselves and really seeking out if this person is speaking the truth or not. They rely on every word that these people are saying and these people are doing nothing but giving you a sugar coated sugar high. Okay, they give you false dreams and deceptions. They give you so much sugar that you feel like you're in a euphoria, that you are um, just walking on cloud nine and you're just overloading on all of this sweetness, sweet talk, cherry picking scripture is what they're doing. And instead of giving you the Bible as a whole and telling you that this is not the way that that you are to live, this is not the way that we are supposed to be as believers, um, this is not the correct doctrine, people are drawn to sweetness and they're drawn to the honey and they don't want anything to do with anything that makes them uncomfortable or that makes them uh, look at their lives and say, you know, I'm messing up here or some, my life is, is really not where it should be. Or, you know, I'm doing things that I really probably shouldn't be doing. And I need to take a focus and, you know, start praying to the Lord. I need to get back in the word because I'm doing things that I shouldn't be doing. And instead they're telling people it's, you know, it's a struggle. If you're struggling with this, it's okay, you know, or they blame God. Well, God hasn't taken this from you yet. So therefore, you know, there's nothing you can do about it because God hasn't taken it from you. And they blame God for not taking this sin out of their life when in fact he took it out of their life the minute that they believed in him. And people are have become a new creation in Christ the minute that they believed in Christ that means that he has taken the old and put in a new he has taken your old life and he has given you a new life and it is because of our flesh it is because of your fleshly desires that you want to continue in the lifestyle of your past and you want to continue doing what you were doing before while you were in the world and then you blame God for not taking that sin out of your life when you're continuing in that life and he told you that you are not that person anymore but you keep putting yourself back into that position and blaming him that he's not changing you he's not taking it from you and he must be okay with it because he won't take it from me. So he must be okay with it. I was born this way. I was born with this. I was born, you know, to be this type of a person. And God put this in me when God never put that in you, but it's a perversion or it's a a, a lust or it's a, uh, a stronghold that Satan has over you. It has nothing to do with God himself. God has taken it from you. You have you are the one that's putting yourself back in bondage. It's not God's fault. And I get so fired up when I hear people saying, "Well, I lived with this my entire life and God hasn't taken it from me, but yet you claim that you are a believer and you're still finding yourself in that position that you were in the past." You're living in the past, but you're not supposed to be that person of the past. You're supposed to be a new person that um, walks and talks and breathes Christ, and you're not. And when you have people like this that are saying, well, I can stop believing and I'm still saved, you have many people 
that hang on to that and are going to be these false converts or these false Christians, these false believers. And, you know, they're going to find themselves left behind. And that's it. It bothers me because there's so many souls that are on the line right now and they need to hear the truth and they need to hear the correct truth not the truth that makes them feel good and not the truth that keeps them going in their flesh and going in their past and going in the direction that they were previously. They need to turn their direction and move towards Christ, not towards the world, not towards the things of the world, not towards these smooth doctrines, you know, these smooth and easy to swallow doctrines that are nothing more than they're going to just lead these people to hell. And so I'm going to leave that with you guys. I just, it infuriates me when I see these things and when I see it on YouTube, you know, and I see it on Twitter and I see all of these things and they just twist it and make it, make it their own and they follow their own belief and they follow their own doctrine. And then they, they condemn other people or they point fingers at other people for being legalistic because they're telling you you're wrong. You're believing in a false belief. You're believing things that are wrong and you need to turn around. You're, you're going the wrong way. It's like, you know, you're trying to warn somebody going the wrong way on a train track. You go on the wrong way and they won't listen to you. Oh, you're, you're just, you're being hateful. You're, you're being spiteful. You're being legalistic. I don't want to listen to you. And then they get run over by the train. I mean, it, it comes to a point where, like I said earlier, you need to leave the crib and you need to grow up and be an adult and you need to start reading the word of God for what it is and you need to start um, listening to the voice of the Lord, obeying what he is telling people to do, what he's telling you to do, listen to his voice, not the voice of man telling you all of these, you know, soft and easy doctrines. So anyways, guys, that's what I had for you today. I am, I, I implore you to please do not listen to these people because I would, like I said, I would not bank my eternity on these doctrines that you can stop believing and you're still saved. I would not bank my life on that. And there is a reason why the Bible says the things that it says. And um, so I'm going to leave that with you guys. And I love you guys, and I will talk to you later.